A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three who testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has this testimony within himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar by not believing the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever possesses the Son has life. Whoever does not possess the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life, you who believe in the name of the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Praise, Praise, the, Lord. God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord of Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise Praise Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It happened that there was a man full of leprosy in one of the towns where Jesus was. And when he saw Jesus, he fell prostrate, pleaded with him, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it, be made clean. And the leprosy left him immediately. Then he ordered him not to tell anyone. But go show yourself to the priest and offer your cleansing what Moses prescribed. And that will be proof for them. The report about him spread all the more, and great crowds assembled to listen to him and to be cured of their ailments. But he would withdraw to deserted places to pray. The, the Gospel of the Lord. from their downtown Atlanta parish on a mission trip 
to rural Kentucky. They spent a week at Barnes Mountain helping convert an abandoned farmhouse into a new mission. And by the end of the first day, the city kids were joined by three local teenagers, including a terrific kid named Dwayne. Dwayne and the Atlanta teens quickly established a fast friendship. He was so fascinated with their stories as they were with his. The Atlanta kids told Dwayne about the dining room at the top of the Marriott that goes around once an hour. Dwayne told the kids about his uncle who had fallen down an abandoned coal mine and broke his hip. They told him about the Atlanta Braves. He told them about the pet barn owl he had raised from a baby. And Dwayne and his new friends worked together, played together, ate together, and at the end of the week, they prayed together. And the kids were deeply impressed and moved by their Appalachian experience. At their service on the last day, many expressed their thanks for the privilege of working to sewer to serve the poor people of that area. But after the service, Duane's whole attitude and demeanor changed. And the priest asked Duane what was wrong. You called me poor. I swear I never thought of myself that way until you said it. I have all these woods to run around in. I have a grandma and granddaddy who love me. I got a whole shed full of rabbits I can play with any time I want. Does that sound poor to you? It don't sound poor to me. You all should have your prayers for someone who needs them. So for us, may we realize, not realize, is, but there are people, some here, some people here, who however unconsciously, we treat as lepers. The poor, the undereducated, maybe the underemployed, the physically and mentally challenged, even sometimes the elderly. And our attitudes and perceptions, however, unintentional, often dismiss people who don't, quote, fit our image as ideal, as lepers of the kind. And the lepers who are imprisoned by labels and stereotypes and who are regulated to the margins of our communities and societies, who are rejected as too unclean to be part of our lives and our world. And it automatically brings to mind to me the major crisis we have, not only in certain cities, but across the country, for the poor and the homeless sleeping on the streets. The Christ who heals lepers comes to perform a much greater miracle, a miracle for us, to heal us of our debilitating sense of self that fails to realize the sacredness and dignity of those we demean as lepers at our own gates. So today we pray that God would open our hearts by the light of his grace to help us see in one another recognizing that they too have been created in your sacred image. Amen.